Dark Music Musician, and today we've got an overview of Reason's new drum sequencer player. This comes free with Reason 10.1 through pretty much the end of May. Uh, so go ahead and go to the props shop and download this for free if you already own Reason 10. Don't hesitate because it will disappear for free, um, and then you'll have to buy it. Um, and if you're watching this at a later date, then um, I'm going to do a review of the player separately. This here is just going to be an overview of its features. And I'm also going to do a, a video on um, some of its more advanced abilities. But um, let's just hit play real quick and just kind of show you what's going on here. All right. So it's a drum player. Great. Um, we'll start from scratch and we'll look at everything in it. What I've got going on here is a slightly more complex um, combinator that I put together. It's not, it's not really complex, it's just, um, well, we'll get into that into a, in a second. But here, open up the Kong. You can use this with any type of device. For example, you could use it with Battery by Native Instruments, which is a third-party VST. You could use it with Redrum. Basically, uh, you could use it not with a drum sequencer, but it works best with drums, I think. Um, and so, basically, you have eight channels here, um, which are mapped to the notes. So, if you ever need to change it, you can just say, all right, this is mapped to B0 now, or C8. Um, but by default, it's pretty much where most drum sequencers frequently put things. So now we'll load up some samples on the drum. Um, and now if you click on the numbers here, it will trigger the sound. Then you can go to the next column here and type in the name. So kick one. So this will help you keep track of things. Um, the next column over just determines which key is associated with it. So this one here, if I play my physical keyboard, sorry, uh, that's the note C1. I'm touching my physical keyboard now. That's C1, and that's what this triggers. But I could also make this trigger D th D1, which would be this note. Um, so you can use that with different drum machines. Or if you notice, there's 16 pads on the Kong and only eight channels here. So you could put two drum sequencers together um, and have them, the first one cover the first eight notes and the second one cover the next eight notes by just going up. Um, then you've got mute, or what we'll do is we'll load a pattern in. Actually, there's a bunch of initiated patches here, or patches that we can drop in. So here's just a simple four on the floor. Doesn't really work very well with this uh, drum kit, but whatever. The mute and solo, you can just... Or we can just solo the kick. Pretty simple and straightforward. Um, then you've got um, these up and down arrows here. And these map to this little menu here. Um, so preset allows you to just go through the presets. This is the master section here. But like I said, there's a bunch of presets that come with it. And But you can also just individually. So these are like the different kick presets here. So. So um, that's a quick way to do that. The other options here are copy and paste. So you could hit copy on the kick pattern here and then go to another pattern and paste it in there. Or you could copy the, in if we uh, reset the device, um, let's just, whatever. Uh, you could go to copy paste and go copy the entire pattern here and then go to the next pattern and paste it in, and then you could add some variation to it. Um, you also have shift, which basically just lets you move over the hits one way or the other. Um, sorry. Uh, random, randomize any patterns. Can get some interesting sounds that way. Or the 
whole. All right, found my new groove. Uh, you can just alter, like it just. Um, I'm not sure what percentage, but it takes what you already have and just alters it a very little bit. Um, so it's mostly the same pattern, but it's a great way to quickly come up with patterns. And if you want to clear out just one instrument line, boom. Or if you want to clear them all out, there you go. Um, this learn here allows you to quickly change what um, note is associated. This used to be D, but I hit the, I'm just hitting random note keys on my keyboard and you see that it changes. So this is probably the fastest way to remap. Um, unfortunately, it's not a way to shift everything up an octave. Like as far as I know, you can't go, you know, select them all and then make them start at C2 or I guess A, uh, a, a flat one or A sharp one so that you could get them stacked on top of each other quickly. Um, then moving on, along we've got basically the grid here right so your highlighted channel this is the kick um is yellow i mean is orange and then you go to an, a next channel and the one you were every other one becomes green basically um so this is gonna be a lot of snare hats here um and then if we were to go to the closed hi-hats you see the other ones become green so this is how you kind of tell where you're active. I feel like it's kind of reverse intuitive though. I feel like the track that you're actively working on should be green and uh, the one that you've that you're not working on should be orange but whatever. Uh, it just takes a second to get used to. So then moving along you've got this number here which is 16 but you could quickly do polyrhythms by dragging this to the left so that there's only 12 bars for the snare, or 12 beats for the snare, but 16 beats for the other two, and so they'll loop in interesting combinations. And the display does this really well. You notice how the sort of muted gray channel, the, the slightly gray channel is where you're playing, and you can see how this one resets every 12. Um, whereas these ones keep on going. Then over here we have this, uh, two options really, but one is speed um, and direction. So we could have the like the high or the snare played even in double time if it wasn't fast enough, where everything else played at a regular time. And again, just pay attention to the gray box. Or you could have it play in half time or a quarter time. Um, and also you can have the direction different, so, um, including random, but, uh, if we do random, you'll see it just sort of playing in half time and randomly selecting these notes. Um, then, um, we have to kind of go up to this menu and slice, uh, our slide, sorry, um, allows you to just slightly offset, um, let me put this at a regular. Uh, speed and at a non random also here's a cool thing the image actually changes here right now it's a forward arrow when you go forward backwards is a backwards arrow pendulum is a double-sided arrow and random is kind of like a die but we'll have this go forward and then go to slide and this sort of just yeah 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 um offsets things a little bit to get more groove like if you want the back beat on Um, which can be really helpful for just adding more groove. Um, up top, you also have the ability to do anywhere between 50 and then a global shuffle, um, which I think will allow you to, or turn shuffle off, which should allow you to use um, the regroove. Um, then let's uh, let's see if we've got a simpler pattern. Yeah, so. Um, down here you've got velocity, and what you can do is you can adjust all the velocities here, um, or you can individually adjust velocities on notes or turn off 
notes completely or draw in notes by drawing in velocity. Um, and this here is really, really helpful, especially for hi-hats and stuff to get a quick feeling. Um, so, And then repeats um, allows you to make certain notes play, for example, twice. Uh, so that'll do a double, triple, quintuple, flams, different flammy effects. So let's just listen to this. That is such a huge time saver. It's ridiculous. Um, especially for like trap type beats. Um, my only real gripe with this is like, it would be great if you could individually adjust the volumes or velocities of these notes as well. From an interface standpoint, I understand it would be kind of difficult to implement, especially right now, but often um, to make these flam type effects sound really realistic and these repeat type fills, it's like the downbeat is louder than the upbeat. Um, and you can't do that right now, or at least I don't know how, but if you guys know how, please leave a comment. Also, if you're finding this helpful, um, please don't fail to like and subscribe to this video um, and let me know what else you'd like to know. Uh, so then we've got the probability knob right or box right here. Um, and basically, uh, come on now, come on, probability. Probability, come on. So, okay, to get probability, you drag down and it starts at a, uh, it starts at 100 and then basically this will change the percentage chance that an instrument is played or a hit is played. And this can quickly get you to very interesting uh, sort of sounds because it's gonna vary every single time. So that's super cool, um, and it's I think the graphic way that they display things is really helpful. Both the intensity of the color, the box, I think that's really well implemented. Um, finally, you've got the ability to sort for patches, uh, and that comes with quite a few uh, over here. Um, and then you can record patterns directly. Uh, you know, here I've got my. Uh, Let's mute this guy. Um. And so now. And then you could tweak it if you want to play a pattern in. Run is to play independent of the master volume. Um, and then you can select between up to eight different patterns. And you can right click to automate the pattern selection. Um, so. Yeah, it's, it's a very intuitive and powerful device, um, and I'm really a fan of it. Also, I guess we'll just flip it around real quick. Um, you can also use the gate outs um, if you want to control some other things. We'll get into that in the advanced tips for how to use the drum sequencer. Um, but I wanted to show you, just before we go away, this free download I made for a combinator that basically puts this all together a little better, um, and we'll clear the pattern here for you guys. Um, well, we'll keep it for a second while I demo this, and this will be there'll be a link down below to download it. But basically, what I've gone and done here is um, taken the sequencer, and I've put a label on the four main functions that you use: kick, snare, hi hat, close, and open. Um, and then you can fill in the rest depending on what you use on your songs. Um, and I've combined it with a just a con kit, you should change the samples. And then on the con kit, what I've done is I've changed the outputs so that you can set up individual mix channels really quickly. Um, this is how I normally do it. So output three and four is on the kick, five and six, seven and eight for the, both sets of hi-hats. Um, unfortunately, Reason can't store separate mix channels, so you'll have to recreate the mix channels every time and put them on. 
but um, this way you can mix from the mixing board a lot easier. And then these rotaries, the first rotary will control the pattern selection, so you can automate things a little quicker. Um, and there'll be a link down below to download this. Uh, this will save you a lot of time. There will be no pattern in it. Um, and basically you can just open up drum sequencer patch and start getting your uh, Kong sounds going right away. Hope you enjoyed this. Again, don't hesitate to leave a question about anything you'd like to learn more about. And be sure to like and subscribe. And I'm wishing you a great day.